Hi, it's Kevin Yu from the Kevin Yu Real Estate Team. With your daily Facebook Live, you ask, I answer. So today's question is, how many homes should I see before making an offer? This is like a, a question that comes up a lot uh, from my buyers. And there's, not, there's no real answer to this. I had had buyers where they seen only one house and made an offer in. Just like myself, when I bought my current house, I think we, we've seen only one house and then we, we essentially made an offer right away. And then I have had clients where they've taken six months, a year, where they've seen 50, 100 homes. What it comes down to is how, how you see things. There's two types of buyers out there. There are ones that are called maximizers. And these are the type of buyers that if they see something, they might think that there's something else better out there. So they go and see all the other things. And then there's types of uh, buyers that are they're called satisfiers. And these are ones that, you know, if it match mostly what they're looking for, they're okay with it. They don't need to go look, look any further. And in, in the Toronto real estate market, one of the things that has happened in the past where I've had, had buyers saw the first house that they saw, I knew right away that that was the house. And my buyers feel that as well, but these are the type of buyers that are maximizers. So they're like, oh, I can't offer right away because I, I've seen, I have to go see a few more houses just to feel comfortable. So what usually happens during these scenarios is that they're hoping that that house is, is gonna be still around while they go shopping around, or they're hoping that uh, they're gonna see another house just like that one when they go sh down the road when they've seen like 10, 20 homes already. But a lot of times I find that if you find a house that really matches what you're looking for and, and you set it as the bar, it's very tough to find that home again. And that's how the real estate market works, essentially. And it's it's very, it's very difficult to judge what's going to happen with the market. But from my experience, when you see the house that matches about 70 to 80% of what you're looking for, that might be the home. Because trying to match so many different criteria, it's very tough, in, in, especially in Toronto's real estate market. So I guess there's no definite answer for this, and it varies from buyer to buyer. But typically, what I find is, when I show about 10 homes, five to 10 homes, that's usually is the sweet spot, because the majority of my clients, once they see that many homes, they feel like they, they've seen enough of the market because there's not a lot to choose from anyways. And they're able to essentially put an offer in. So one of the, the things that I do for my clients to help them get through this hurdle of avoiding seeing like 500 homes, because you know what? You probably want your life back <laughs> and not spend every weekend, every evening looking for homes. You probably want to be efficient. So what I do is I have an exercise for my clients. This is uh, one of the exercises I have for my clients where I may have spouses if they're partners. Uh, each partner make a list, a list of what they're looking for in a home. It's open, it's open, open ended. It could be a list of three things, five things, ten things. But the top three things that they want, they put a star next to it. So essentially what this does is that it will take your uh, your want list. And from that want list, you, you break it down so that you have a needs list. Because wants are good and all, but they're not deal, deal breakers. The needs list are deal breakers. These are things like uh, certain neighborhoods you have to be in. You have a car and very nice car and you want a garage. That's not some of them. Some, some people that's non negotiable. Uh, one of the things for parents, at least, one of the things that's really non negotiable is school districts. They don't want to end up in a bad school district for their kids. So, so you really, when you're looking for a home, there's no definite answers of oh, how many homes to see, but it's about organizing your thoughts, prioritizing your needs, and then and then looking for that home and putting the effort in to go see it because things happen so quickly in the market that something that but type, the type of homes that are available this week are not going to be available next week and they might not be around ever again 
that's what happened with my home as well. I remember when I when we first seen, seen the first home, I'm like, okay, I don't think anything else like this is going to pop up again. And it didn't. It took almost a year and a half before I seen another house like mine pop up in my neighborhood. So imagine I had to wait a year and a half for the house again. It's not the same price anymore. Probably paying about 15 to 20% more at the rate that we're going right now. So if the home costs a million dollars a year and a half ago, and, and by the time it comes back again, it would be 1.2. So there you have it. And so make a list, prioritize, and that's the way you should do it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.